Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Doka Metal video. In this video we are going to take a look at the Int Emperor's True Splendor Golden Freezer Angel. And we're going to take a look at his Extreme Z Battle that has come to DBZ Doka Metal Global. Now obviously uh, with his Extreme Z Battle you get 30 stones and you get some Int Grand Kai's. But you also receive his EZA medals, which will improve the unit quite substantially. So, obviously in terms of effective categories of units here, Super Physical and Defenders of Justice are going to be your friends. Generally speaking, they are the best way to handle this event. Of course, uh, Frieza receives his Extreme Z Awakening, which is pretty good. Uh, he's got a resurrected warrior's lead which becomes 170 percent across the board in type lead that becomes 120 percent he will now greatly raise defense on his super attack and he also has attack of 250 percent defense of 150 percent enemy attack reduction of 15 percent along with an additional seven percent for super class enemies and an additional attack and defense of 100 percent when facing a super class enemy he also has attacks effective against all types when there is another rep of Universe 7 category ally attacking in the same turn. Freeze is a pretty interesting unit. Obviously, um, I think his best pairing partner is the physical Angel Freezer. So it's going to be interesting to see and take a look at him. Overall, the options for this category are pretty decent in terms of free-to-play options. We have a very strong free-to-play team to take on this category. So I think it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, if you guys haven't done Extreme Z Battles before, it's, yeah, 30 stages. There are some missions for the stages as well, which aren't up at the beginning of the video, but we'll take a look at it at the end. And then, of course, your main goal is to use the effective category. The boss will slowly start to accrue, you know, different kinds of immunities to stunning, sealing, etc. In terms of team build, we're going to be using the Great Saman 1 and 2 Friend Summon as our lead. Their leader skill applies if you have one unit of each type in the team. It's super important to understand that I've also easy aid the Great Sandman 1 and 2, so they are a lot better than the standard one that you get from the Friend Summon. So they are a very very solid unit, so if you're seeing them and you're wondering why they're doing a lot better than your one, it is possibly because yours is not easy aid. So please just keep that in mind. Now, characters from the Defenders of Justice category will take less damage and mitigate his damage reduction and cause increased damage. But they don't bypass the typing requirements. So if physical drops off, you're going to want to obviously switch those units out. Now in terms of Defenders of Justice, we did receive some pretty nice buffs on the global side because we obviously got the Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 units, uh, who I think overall are really nice additions to the category. So if you have them, uh, you can obviously use them in your team as well. Uh, in terms of raw of leaders, remember also that a lot of the Defenders of Justice units do fall under special pose. So you can also run a special pose team, unless of course you are looking to run Fidel, who you're not quite able to run under a special pose team. The easiest way is going to be to run Videl if you have her. Otherwise, run the special pose team under Gamma 1. Alternatively, you can use my free to play lead in the form of Great Sandman 1 and 2, or you can use one of the sub leads of self proclaimed elite, Jocko. So that's it. Obviously, as you guys know, I'll be doing stage 1, 10, 20, and 30. Uh, the team doesn't change the whole way through, it does get a little bit slow near the end. So, yeah, I would suggest doing that. I would also suggest changing out the Great Sandman 2 and 1, which is the tech version, Great Sandman 2 and 1, and also consider changing out the AGL uh, Trunks Great Sandman Halloween outfit card. There's plenty of other units you can use in this situation instead, uh, so I would highly suggest doing so, possibly focusing on physical based units instead, just to increase that level of damage. Uh, Casserelle is a unit that you could use, the Pride Troopers unit, but he is technically a lot better when he's paired up with a Universe 11 character, so you don't really want to use him, but it is a possibility. So let's talk about Freezer and his EZA. So Freezer's EZA 
is relatively straightforward. Uh, it's just basically a substantial increase on what he already did. So Frieza was a great damage dealer that debuffed the enemy and now he just does that further. 22% debuff for the enemy and he now has greatly maximized attack. He does have improved defense but from what I've seen I don't think it's enough of an improvement to make him a super tanky unit but he should be okay against super class enemies after he fires his super attack. He has a very similar problem that Turles faces with AGL Turles' EZA being incredibly good but the main issue being that AGL Turles gains a ton of buffs against super class enemies and most of the game's super hard content, in fact all of the game's super hard content being red zones and being the Cell Max event predominantly and exclusively take place against extreme class enemies. So Frieza suffers very similarly as Turles does. Frieza himself technically will do great against superclass enemies. Frieza however has no real superclass enemies to face and so this causes him some kind of problems uh, and it, it's again not necessarily to speak down on him. I think as a unit he is interesting and I think he, he is pretty good. I think a lot of people give him flack but I actually think he's a pretty solid character. But the fact that the predominant game modes people look for units to come out and be good in is red zone. He is very limited by that. Now he does fortunately share quite a few link skills uh, with quite a few units. The physical Angel Freezer is really looking forward to pairing with this guy. Uh, the third form Freezer is looking forward to pairing with him. The AGL Golden Form Freezer pairs well with this guy. So he has a lot of great units. Uh, whether it's a long form event, you can bring the physical Freezer, maybe for some stacking. You can have the Tech or the AGL Golden Freezer to bring this unit uh, a little bit of you know, tanking for the first slot. In terms of his categories as well, he is on Transformation Boost, he is on uh, Wicked Bloodlines. So he can get 200% leader skill from the Physical Metal Cooler. LR, but he cannot get a 200% leader skill from the LR cooler. Remember, LR cooler does not cover uh, the full, he only covers Terrifying Conquerors. So it is something that you do need to kind of be aware of. Uh, he covers Terrifying Conquerors and movie bosses, and this freezer is from the Tournament of Power arc. So he no longer has Terrifying Conquerors and he no longer has uh yeah he's not a movie boss golden freezer so this is a little bit unfortunate in that he's limited in that sense but he does have a 200 percent leader skill in the form of physical metal cooler so we'll likely be trying him yeah under physical metal cooler and we'll be trying him with uh you yeah, know some of the other angel golden freezers or golden freezers that he can link with in terms of his best 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 linking partner uh, I would probably say that the physical Golden Freezer is, is his best partner overall. Uh, but pairing him with an Angel, sorry, with the AGL Golden Freezer is also not a bad bet. Because of the fact that that Freezer can just tank in the first slot, it really pairs up nicely with this unit that is going to gain a substantial this. amount of defense after super attacking. Which, you know, you definitely do have to factor in. So now if we take a look at... Yeah, this final stage. As you can see, the team didn't change too much. There was a very notable difference between our team's performance when we had the physical LR readily available from turn one to when we didn't have the physical LR available. Uh, the physical LR was a vast majority of our damage. Even Videl does fall off uh, a little bit later on, predominantly due to the lower leader skills and the fact that we're running a 130% lead as our major lead. She still does great. She's still our, high, our second highest damage dealer. I've looked and personally I do prefer taking one of the gammas, uh, gamma one being the, uh, sorry, gamma two being the main one. I just find that he does a lot more damage overall and AGL typing is not limited by Freeze's uh, you know, overall mechanics of his extreme z battle so 
I did find that to be kind of better for me. Uh, I, I personally found it that way. Uh, since he doesn't limit AGL type or strength type, I just found that one of the gammas, especially gamma 2 because of his special pose category lead, just felt a little bit better to run. And it predominantly was just because I felt like he did quite a significant amount of damage. Um, obviously, you know, it's going to depend on yourself, what you have at the time. If possible, I would suggest taking him. If you are struggling, he does do a fantastic job. But that's going to be it. It is, fortunately, a very, very easy uh, Extreme Z battle. Predominantly because of the strength of the free-to-play options that we have for Defenders of Justice. So, as you guys would have seen, you know, from the team I'm using, we have quite a few good options. Uh, and I think overall they do a pretty good job. We do still have some more alternative free-to-play options, but I find that these ones work the best, at least for me personally. And yeah, I would highly suggest bringing the Int Transforming Gohan team that turns into Great Saiyan 1. And I would highly suggest bringing the Gohan team and Videl Joined Forces unit. I think both those units do a fantastic job and bring a lot of damage uh, and just overall tankiness. Like I said, the AGL Trunks Great Saiyan unit and the Tech Great Saiyan 1 and 2, or sorry, 2 and 1, I would probably drop first. Great Saiyan 2 and 1 don't take a lot of damage, but they just don't dish out damage after a certain point, and that does make things go a little bit slow. So I would definitely look at replacing that. But beyond that, that's pretty much it. So that is the Extreme Z battle, that's everything you need to know. If you guys are struggling, you can always let me know uh, in the comments and I'll try and help you out. Ideally though, I would suggest that you should have plenty of options to get this done and plenty of great free-to-play options. Especially since the Great Sandman 1 and 2 should be a unit that's pretty re readily available to a lot of players. As you can see, we did get missions, although they weren't present at the beginning. They are pretty straightforward, finishing the stages under a certain time limit and also completing the stage with certain team building requirements. But that's it, now the only step left will be to awaken Golden Freezer uh, who I will awaken, I do have him, and I will awaken him, and then we'll see just how good he is. But that's it for me, enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Bye.